Welcome back to our Stupid Directions feed. It's Corbin. I have stuff on me now. It's probably dog hair. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Oh. Juicy content. La la la. It's so juicy. You can Patreon and follow our official Twitter account. And today, yes. It has begun. It has begun. Uh, we are starting the Apu trilogy. We watched the first one, which is uh, Panther... Pan how do you pronounce that last part? Panchali? Well, it's not Panther to start off with. Oh yeah, it's not. Pather. No. Panchali. Sure. Sure. How do you pronounce it? Oh. Pather Panchali. See? I was right. Uh, <laughs> but yes, we, we uh, started with that one and how it's going to be this. Which is smart for us to do. It's not like Doom 3 yeah. first. We shouldn't start with the no, last No, we're starting with the first one first for change. But uh, for this series, as you're going to see right now, it's going to be called the a Pooh trilogy review. We're just gonna watch the first one, review it, then we're gonna watch the second one, review it, and but we're gonna put it all in one video. So it'll be probably a little Three longer for than the price of one. It's gonna be a 90 minute video, I'm so, predicting. But each of these is uh, going to be uh, a different day. So just, right. just so you're aware. Uh, but yes, the first one, uh, obviously directed by, do you, is it Ray or Rai? It depends on how you want to pronounce it. How would you like to pronounce it? Rai. Rai. That's Sachidit Rai. Uh, and composed by Ravi Shankar. Yep. Uh, I didn't realize that actually. No? Uh, no, when, yeah. like when we did the trailer and when we were going to talk about it, I didn't realize he was the one that. Oh yeah, well I, I didn't either until his name popped up in the credits at the start and I was like, yeah. Wow. That's what I said. I was yeah. like, oh, oh, that's exciting. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, so it, just read the quick synopsis. Impoverished moment. priest, Hariharai, dreaming of a better life for himself and his family, leaves his rural Bengal village in search of work. He's a that's, priest? That's, that's, that's it. I guess yes. it makes sense. I, I, was, I didn't associate scholar with priest. No, he was absolutely... Was yes. He? Yes. Oh, I thought he was like a, a school scholar. He was. He was both. He okay. was both. He was both a, a, a scholar and he was also a priest. Gotcha. I don't oh. pick up on the priest part. But yes. So the uh, this is such a rise first first directorial film debut ever. Um, impressive uh, to say the to say the the very least. Uh, do you want to? Say any of the, the actors' names? Because I'm, I'm not sure. going to touch those with a simple pole. Well, the majority of them are going to be Bengali last names, that's for sure. Uh, Kanu Banerjee, Karuna Banerjee, uh, Chuni Bali Devi, Uma Das Gupta, Subur Banerjee, Runky Banerjee, mm. Reba Devi, and... I think those are all the main ones. Yeah, Aparna Devi, uh, Tulsi Chakraborty, Haran Banerjee, from Pada Das. Yeah, I think those yeah, are all the main ones. Oh, and there's a Mukherjee down there. Is that her name? Yep. Benoit Mukherjee. They're all related. They're all Bengali. <laughs> so, yes, the... Well, uh, at least the G's were. The, uh, the film... Man. This... Because uh, the only other thing we've seen of him is two. Two. Um... This, uh, I think I can speak for both of them. This man can say so much with, this is what, 85% silent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This entire thing is mostly 85% silent. Yep. Um, and uh, very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. to, to say the very least. Um, yeah, what do you want to go? Yeah, I, I uh, obviously... And Drani knew I was watching it and wanted to talk to me the minute I was done watching it, which I do with any of the films anyway. And, but this one had a particular obvious place in the heart. And uh, that was one of the first things I said among many things was that I don't know I've ever seen a director say more saying so little. Mm -hmm. um, and just as good as film directing gets because... Um, you want to show, not say, in, in film. You don't get to do that as often on stage. But I'm... Uh, several takeaways. That, that he... I've never seen a director say more was saying so little. And he was, to my view, just way ahead of his time cinematically. Mm -hmm. um, he did some things with shots that I didn't even know you could do in 1955. Mm -hmm. He had mastery of some things utilizing black and white and lighting that were obviously designed by him to take that shot that reminded me of the technical brilliance we've applauded all the time with uh, Bansali. Yet, it was almost 
I, I was talking about this one part with Indrani. There, there's that moment where he's got the shot of the, the twig in the water and mm. the firefly lands on it facing camera. So it was like, almost like God was partnering with him I sometimes. Wonder how, I wonder how long he stayed there. I, I do too, for, and got that shot. But there were so many moments like that where- Lots of flies landing on people's face at perfect moments. Yes. Like, I don't know. Yes. I don't know how you did that. I know. <laughs> but um, And I, I will have, the more we talk about this, I'm going to have an, uh, definitive bias that's coming from the fact that I have this connection to Bengal. We are over. Yeah. And even, even though this doesn't take place in Calcutta, there was a lot about this that reminded me of when I was in Calcutta. So, uh, just setting as I, as much as I can, that bias aside, this was for me, yeah, I had high expectations going in after having heard so much about him and having seen two, but I felt this was just extraordinary. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Filmmaking. I think one of the things that was so impressive about it is that it felt like a documentary. Mm -hmm. Like how he got these actors to just, it, it seems like he just went to a village and kind of filmed people. Right. Which is impressive, mm -hmm. especially for like the amount we've seen from Indian cinema, especially older, where a lot of it's over dramatic. Right. And, and, and stuff like that. And that was a style that they, they put in into the films. Yeah. Uh, to be 1955 and have some of the most natural acting I've ever seen is is very impressive. It is somewhat mind-boggling mm -hmm. when you consider A Streetcar Named Desire had come out four years prior. Mm -hmm. So not all cinema in Hollywood was there yet, no. but James Dean was there doing it. Mm -hmm. And there were some other films that were getting there. Uh, but... He, these are a lot of the folks he used, in, not just his actors, but his crew were amateur. So he, um, are any of them actual actors or? Did yeah, the, the most, the most prominent one to my knowledge is, and I won't remember her name right off the top of my head is the, his mom. Mm -hmm. His mom is, is, a um, was at the time, my understanding, a, had actually done some acting and in fact was, um, really didn't want to take on the role at first. Mm. Um, Why? But she particularly wasn't fond of the idea of portraying an impoverished woman in that position. Mm. Uh, I've seen a very, very small thing that Indrani showed me about her talking about that. It was a very, very, very small clip. Uh, and, but like the majority of it, can we just talk about Auntie? Mm. You, you can't, that woman, uh, and not only that woman portraying that lady, who clearly was not shape shifting. She she wasn't in makeup. I don't think she was putting on the bent over posture. That was that woman, and her eyes and her face and her toothlessness. That was that lady, and uh, <coughs> totally. I believed, like you said, that I was a fly on the wall watching this family in this village. And I believe that those little kids were brother and sister. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my, my favorite actress is probably the, the main actress. I, I, I thought it was such a, a complex character. For, the mom? Yeah, for 1955. Yeah. Um, to have this woman who probably wanted to do a lot more mm -hmm. than be in a jungle village. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and then to... Like her husband's going off, but she has to stay back. And now yeah. she's like, she has no money. And so yeah. she's doing the same things every day. It's getting monotonous and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then the unthinkable happens and she loses one of the two things she cares about now more than anything else that she has left. Right. And so it's like, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it was such a complex character for being 1955. And a woman. And a woman. Yeah. In 1955. Who basically, I mean... I know it's the Apu trilogy, but this is, she's, this is basically, this story is mostly her as the main lead. Mm -hmm. um, we are seeing this for the majority of the time through Apu's eyes, and there's so much I want to say about that. But, and I also want to talk about the, here's, here's a fun word for those of you who've pointed it out with me, juxtaposition of the, the, the mom and the auntie. 
Um, so where do you want to go first? What, what path do we want to go down first? For what? We do you want to talk about the perspective that Sachi Rai gives to us through the kid and some of the symbolism in there. Okay. Uh, first of all, I thought he did a brilliant job of tackling things that are universal and timeless because this is a film that's taking place in Bengal in 1955 and black and white with a culture that we would be unfamiliar with, but we're more familiar with mm. and makes it accessible to anybody because he's dealing with stuff that's universal. Everything from the games that the kids are playing to the bullying that's happening with the kids mm -hmm. to what the people, what the neighbors keeping up with the Joneses per se. And then the connection point when he finally brings Apu and the sister to a place where they see the power lines mm -hmm. and the train and the mechanization of society compared to the organic connected to life. Um, he just, again, says, like he did with two, he says a lot by saying yeah. nothing and just showing you things. And what really helped was Probably one of my favorite parts of the film was Ravi Shankar's the score. The the score was, absolutely it was absolutely so simple, mm -hmm. but so beautiful. So beautiful and, and it, so perfect emotionally. It, it made you feel like this is just life happening. Correct. And that's what I, I think was his intent. Was yep. like when they were walking down, the music would start. Yep. Like, this is just life. They're it's just, tell it. I, the, the score would be one of those few because not all scores can do this. It, it transports you. Mm -hmm. I, I felt, and you forget the score, though you're aware of the score. It, it, it is a, it, you, I remember there were points where I realized midway into whatever the background music was, that the background music was there because I was so engrossed in what was going on that the score was like just as present as the, the, the sky and mm -hmm. the trees and the ground. And so when it was there, it just felt so natural for it to be there and was taking me to a place emotionally. Like I remember what he started to do with the score when the dad finds out about the daughter when he gets back mm -hmm. and, uh, and when they're playing and uh, it just, and the simplicity of the instrumentation, what he did, like the simplicity of their life. It's yeah, just it was incredible. Really, it was really crazy what he did. It was like at certain moments that we've seen in other films that people will use certain scores to heighten emotion. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that all the time. And it, we never used it in those that kind of way. He kind of did what I love. It's just he, he stayed on the actor yeah. for a long time and just let that that marinate for you. Just let it be. Uh, which yeah. is my favorite part. I don't. I don't need music all the time to get to where the performance should be getting me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really enjoyed that aspect of, of, of what he did. He's just, he, he's so impressive for, is this whole thing about just Apu's life? The, uh, yes. Did yeah. he set Apu trilogy? So it's probably the next one's going to say when he's a teenager and I, when he gets to an adult. That I don't know. I do know that it does cover him through the years. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know the specificity of each of the films and what it represents. Mm -hmm. And let's just, uh, his, his mastery of framing some, some shots and the usage of black and white, for me, the quintessential master of black and white that I've seen is Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. And there were Hitchcockian things. Combine that with Sanjay Leela Bansali with the use of light. There, and there was one shot. Well, first of all, there were a couple shots. The shot where Apu looks into the jar and the cameras in the jar. So how many times is that the perspective in Breaking Bad? Inside of something, inside mm -hmm. the vat where they're cooking the meth, inside of the lunchbox, inside of something. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the technology and the cameras and the devices that we just drop something in there and do it real quick. Mm -hmm. That wasn't an easy shot to do back then. No. And frame it that way. Another shot, I don't know how he did in 1955. Mm. It's a shot where the husband is laying in bed and the wife is back in the other room, either cooking or finishing something up, and they're talking to one another. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And the shot has both of them in focus. How did he do that in 1955? Lighting, probably. I guess. Yeah. But the lens has to have a frame of reference to center on back then. Mm -hmm. 
to focus. So maybe that's just my ignorance of what was capable technologically at the time, but I don't recall ever seeing anything from that era that captures a dual focus shot when two characters are that far away from each other. Maybe where one was, is in the foreground and one is in the background. Maybe it was a, a optical illusion. Maybe they weren't actually very far from it each other. It may have been, yeah. but whatever it was and the way he had it lit, and the, the I could tell he had, it's one of my favorite. Here's The thing about Sanjay Lila Bansali is that he will get a shot that kind of, if there's a flaw to it, he'll remove you from the story mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll just, like I did that with one of his films and I stopped it and I went, look at that shot. Mm -hmm. Rai does that without me leaving the story in the film and the emotional connectivity. I just, I, I don't want to. I'm, I'm looking at some of the shots and thinking the amount of time he took to put that shot together or, or was this just again Divine Providence going, there you go, Mr. Director. Mm -hmm. You know, just beautiful. And did you catch, there are a lot of, obviously, messages within the film. But one of my favorite in the film was the juxtaposition of the aunt and the mom. And how the mom, the perspective of both. That the mom was going through a lot of really difficult things, but her focus was on the difficult things. Yeah. She was consistently in a negative headspace, consistently pessimistic, consistently scared. Mm -hmm. And I remember the stark contrast of the one evening where it's coming to an end, and she is depressed. And Auntie, who's half or not fully blind practically, bent over, toothless, has gone through a lot of pain and sorrow for her whole life, I'm sure. Probably mm -hmm. widowed. Yeah. She's seen probably a lot more pain and suffering than this young woman. But she's singing hymns at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And seemed to be, of the two, the one who was consistently in an upbeat, positive... She was the more childlike, connecting with the kids. I, I found that to be an extremely interesting perspective, uh, uh, presentation of the power of perspective and mindset, irrespective of what your circumstances are, because they were both in similar circumstances, but one was choosing to be happy, and the other one was choosing to look at the things that were, granted, how could you not? But I found that to be really yeah, powerful. it was such an, <clears throat> like I said, complex story, and such a, you, you don't anticipate it being so sad. Right. Like, it's like, I was like, <laughs> oh, we're going here. Okay. Oh, oh, I thought the kid was going to get better. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. You must have liked that. I did. I did yeah. enjoy that a lot. And then I thought it was, I was wondering what he was going to do with the bracelet at the end. Mm. And then he just ended up throwing it in there. And I was like, interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was very, I was like, oh, she left, she left it behind. She, and she, now she, that she's helping the family. And then he was like, I don't, I don't, I couldn't figure out exactly what that meant for the kid, which I like. Well, I, I think it could mean a, a lot of things. It could mean a lot of things. What I took that to mean, well, first of all, she did steal it. Yep. She, oh, she did. Yeah. But her mom at that point didn't know if she had or hadn't. She probably assumed that she had. And I saw that as that little guy wanting, still wanting to protect his sister. Mm-hmm. Not wanting, yeah. Not as like, get you emotional. One, one not wanting yeah. her to get in trouble, even though she's dead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed. It. Also, my 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 dad came out um, when she started to grab the little girl, accusing her of the uh, uh, stealing the bracelet. Mm -hmm. I was like, I would have punched you square in the eye if you <laughs> touched my child. I don't care if she did steal it or right, not. Right. Right. We can touch my kid. We can deal with that later. But if you touch my child, you are going on the ground. In a heartbeat. That's right, Daddy. <laughs> I, I was like, I got in, in, infuriated. <laughs> yeah, with the fact that she would ever touch my child. You know, it wasn't about my child. But yeah, I saw it. And, and there um, were there were things that I think I think an American audience, completely unaware of India, you, you would have to be a, a lover of cinema. Yeah, and even know some things about cinema, like neo realism, and which obviously is an inspiration uh, of Italian films of that era were very, very, which I know Rai was influenced by, were very focused, as was he, 
realism was what mattered most, which again, you mentioned this at the start, mm -hmm. was very, very different than what you see and have seen for years coming out of a lot of Bollywood films. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't about that, it's about the entertainment value. And if anything, this guy is cinema purist in mm -hmm. the terms of art form and realism, the kind of guy who will just let a take go on and on and on and on. There were, and there were moments in this that boggled my mind because like you said, we're, we're just, in 1955, film has just started to begin to see realism, mm -hmm. uh, especially coming out of actors. And there were moments where any other, even experienced actors who, who, who really haven't been trained would have something occur and like break character and stop because clearly we, we can't keep filming because a fly flew on my face or I, there's a moment where the mom is walking and her, her sorry, I think it is, gets caught on a basket. And rather than the actress say, oh, wait, hold on, I'm stuck and we have to cut, she just stays in character as the mom and gets aggravated that her dress, her yeah. sorry got caught on the basket. Realism started basically with Marlon Brando and, and that era of actor. Four years ago in American film. Yeah. Um, Compared to this film. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, it was in, uh, I just watched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There was a moment in it where Leo said, um, uh, he said, with all the stuff on me, how are they going to know it's me? <laughs> so that that's understanding about what that time was. Right. He came from the, the cowboy era where basically just people came to see him. Right. Uh, like the like hero. Some people do with like, like um, Salman Khan or Shah Rukh Khan or people go to see him, not saying those are those type of actors, but um, like no, the, the director person, wanted right? him to disappear. Right, and people not see him, and that's what it transformed to do. But that's what this was, which is why it was so impressive that in 1955, this film was just like you're watching a documentary, very much like a documentary. Like the entire time, I was just like, "Yeah, felt like a documentary." None of these guys seem like actors, <laughs> right? Which is why it's hard to judge them as actors because it just they don't seem like they're acting, right. which is what you strive to, right. which is great. And I was waiting for Especially that. from kids. And especially from the kids. Uh, just very real, very natural. I believe they lived in this village. I was very thankful for what I felt was a believable response when the dad found out that his daughter was dead and when the mom gets there and all he does is ask where she is and she's been trying to compose herself. Uh, totally, incredibly believable, which speaks volumes about Satyajit Rai's capacity to communicate what he's wanting to get and keep people feeling natural and comfortable on a set. Mm -hmm. uh, especially kids. It's really hard to get that out of, out of kids. Um, and, and, and then, yeah, I, I have the definitive bias. There were points of this for me that were very, very deeply personal in the fact that they're just speaking Bengali. Mm. And whenever I'm talking to Indrani, she will be off the phone and be, she'll be talking to her mom or a family member in Bengali. And when I was there, I hear Bengali, even seeing kittens and dogs on the street, um, hearing the fact of the names and certain aspects of it that were just embedded DNA wise for me now. Uh, but this, this like two, is one of the best films I've ever seen. And to me, it is for 1955 on many levels, way ahead of its time. You know what this reminded me of? Hmm. And I actually showed the movie immediately. I said to Indrani, you, may guys, you guys may not know this film. I said, if Sajidit Rai was alive and making films today, he'd make a film like The Florida Project. Hmm. And I watched it with her and she completely agreed because The Florida Project feels like a documentary. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting there in many moments, there's just kids on screen for like two, three minutes doing nothing. Yep. And there's no score. Very little score is used. Yep. And when it's used, it's powerful. And you're just flying on the wall with these people until something happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, yeah. I don't think filmmaking can get much better. Yeah, it's, it was very impressive. I'm very interested to see what's going to what where direction he's going next? Like, yeah. are we jumping in time? Are we gonna? Because we know nothing about what this series is outside of what we've seen so far. Correct. So either I don't know if it's going to start immediately from where it left off, then going to the city. Right. Is that where they're starting, or are they going to jump a few years? Right. I don't know, uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to it, uh, and uh, you will see it in just just a few, few seconds. Few seconds. It'll, we'll watch us change our clothes. Oh, movie magic! How did we do it? Wow, we're in the future.
It's bleak. <laughs> <laughs> As it is for a poo. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, but yes, so now we are on to the second of the Apu trilogy. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, so you're just gonna... Aparegito. Aparegito. It's actually Oparegito. Like is it Italian? The, the, it sounds o Italian. The Opu trilogy. In Bengali, oh, okay, it's, gotcha. it's true. Like, Indrani has a friend. The name is spelled A-R-P-A, mm -hmm. but his name is pronounced Orpo. Oh, Orpo. Like yeah, she said there's a joke that Bengalis don't say apple, they say Opo. Do they really? No, they don't. Oh. <laughs> but the A sound is, is like, it's the Opu trilogy. Anyways, yeah, but anyway, uh, we are on to the second one. You saw the first one just second ago. A second ago. ago. It feels like it was just yesterday, doesn't it? It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, but uh, this one is the following. Uh, following his father's death, a boy leaves. I'm glad we didn't read the description. Uh, wow. Is that what it says? <laughs> it says it right here. Following the death of his father, a boy leaves wow. home to, to study in Calcutta while his mother faced must face a life alone. Great job, IMDB. You suck. <laughs> so, and for those of you who haven't seen the Opu trilogy... Well, I hope you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't still. be here, I would hope. Exactly. We're already on the second but, one. But, yeah, they're totally giving away what happens, like, mid... Like, 30 minutes into the film. Wow. Uh, stupid. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad we didn't read Me that. Me too. Uh, but, yes, obviously directed by Still Sachdit Rai, uh, produced, and Ravi Shankar still did the music uh, for this as well. But yes, this one had a much different feel. You thought? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had much different feelings about the people in this one. Really? Than I did in the first one. Oh, I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, do tell, do tell. Yeah, but I, I, I still really enjoyed the film. I think yeah. it's still, like, I think it's actually impressive. Because I thought it was going to be more, more of a similar type feel. Mm -hmm. But he went a completely different direction in terms of the feeling I have towards his characters. Like... I, I hate a poo. I think he's a dick. Hardcore. Just like you hate Harry Potter. You have something about kids that are male and alone. You hate you hate and lonely kill his male mother. kids. And killed his and mother. And his father. Wow. And brother. I mean sister, not his father. Now, actually, his father, I'm still not convinced he wasn't poisoned. <laughs> Really? I don't know how he died. Honestly, I, we thought he that got, it was one of the... the uh, fever. He got very sick. I know, just randomly, though. I We thought it was actually one of the two guys that wanted to marry his wife. And so that's where oh, I really? thought the story was going for a little bit. Uh, so I, I, wow. I think his husband was poisoned. No, I think he got malaria. Uh, from somebody else. <laughs> but anyways, wow. that's, that's what I wanted to make. Okay. The, um, the, uh, the... Yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of him. We could talk about him more. Okay. But uh, I, I, oh, I, I feel real... so sorry for Opu. I, I don't. Oh. Uh, I feel sorry for his mother. I feel sorry for his mom, too, but I feel even more sorry for Opu. I'm just... How? How? I don't... Anyways. Anyways. But yes, I, I was actually really impressed with uh, such a Rai and him making a different feel of it. I enjoyed that part. And I, I, In I, what I, sense? I enjoyed the... F like, I, I felt like more happy-go-lucky and like more hopeful. Towards the end, uh, toward in the first one, and this you, one, you felt more hopeful at the end of the of the first one like, for the whole film as okay. a whole. And I was like, okay, maybe they're gonna go on life and live happier lives. But then right. he just he just kept bringing it down and keep going down. And like obviously it starts <laughs> off and they're they're struggling with money and all that kind of stuff. But then the father dies, and then the <laughs> and then the the he goes off to college, and the mother's clinically depressed. And then he doesn't come home because he's an asshole. And then he, his mother dies. And then he went off to school, uh, which is fine. But don't do that to your mother. Uh, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed that aspect, the fact that he didn't just go with the same direction. He, I think he went in a completely different direction. Yeah. You don't? Well, he went thematically, I felt like, in a different direction. What did you think about the overall tone? You felt oh, the tone was a, a big shift, too? I think it was more of a... No, not not in terms of like, I felt like a similar film. Right, I was gonna say, did it no. feel like the same film continuing, or it felt very tonally different? Oh no, no, it still felt like the okay. same. That's not what I mean. Gotcha. It, it just in terms of like the the subject, yeah. like it just it keeps going down. And that's why I'm wondering what the third one's gonna be about. I'm like, is anybody gonna live? <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the end of Game of Thrones should have been. Everybody should have died. <laughs> that's what the Apu trilogy is. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I, I really enjoyed. it. I thought the uh, the music was really really good. I thought the I think what's her what's the actress's name who played the mother? Oh, what is her name? Kanu Banerjee. Banerjee. Man, she is talented. 
I would I, like to see more of her. Yeah, uh, I, I immediately, one of the first things I said, uh, obviously I was talking to Indrani after watching this and said, that woman, I am, I am so intrigued by her. Her face is so, she, she personifies what Rai does as a director in that they both say so much by saying so little. Mm -hmm. And she actually has a she has a book. I oh, want, does she? I, I want to get and read. I looked on Amazon. Oh, it's it not about? there, but it's about her. Just about her life. And it's called an actress in her time. It's yeah. about herself because while this was her first film that you see listed on IMDb, she has a very extensive resume in in Bengali film and theater. Interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I, I couldn't find it on Amazon, but but Indrani said that she'll take me to a bookstore in Calcutta when I'm there to uh -huh. buy the book, which makes me happy. I want to buy it there. And yeah, get it there. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely yeah, love I that. Yeah, she actress. she stole the show in terms of the, the in acting in this one. Uh, she just. Like, <laughs> one of the many reasons I was sad that she died because I didn't yeah. want that actress to leave the trilogy. Yeah, that's one, that's one of the things. Like, oh, I hope we're not just left with a poo. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I supremely loved a poo in the first one. Oh, he's such a sweet kid. Uh, even so though. So what he, did he do that was so bad? What that makes did you, you watch? What now? he did to his mother? What did he? What did he do to his mother? He was he. It, she was alone the entire, like for months and months and months, and all she wanted to do was talk to her kid, and he just sat there pretending he was sleeping, just like, yeah, whatever, yeah, stop talking to me. And then he went off to school. No, she had interaction with no, him. No, did you not watch that whole scene? This whole scene was him just, and did her you, trying to talk did, at him. Did you not see him go to the train and not get on the train specifically so that he could be there for his mom? You missed that? He would at he was at the place. He wasn't being with his mother. He purposefully missed the train. And what did he do later? He purposely didn't go on a train. He said, "No, I don't have a break." He did have a break. He's a dick. Wow. And he killed his mother just like he killed his sister. Oh, okay. He did. Think about it. Why did his sister get the what uh, pneumonia or whatever she got? Because he wanted to see the train. And then she got the what flu or whatever it is, the uh, pneumonia or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a fan of a poo right now. He's gonna have to do a lot to redeem himself. All right. I enjoyed the film a lot. So, <laughs> I. <laughs> but I just like I enjoy Harry Potter, but I can hate that boy. I know you do. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I. I you no. just got something with lone male boys growing up. You're saying he didn't do anything wrong. Nothing malicious. Oh my word. It is malicious, malicious to tell your mother that you don't have a break when you actually do have a break and she's alone. It's not like she has a husband, another kid, friends. She doesn't have anything. True. And this is a young boy who is trying to uh, pursue the, the dreams he has for his life mm -hmm. and, and leave the nest. Um, I have no issues with that. And he had a couple days to spend with his mother. I'm not saying I. I will never tell a kid to stay home with his parents when it, when he could pursue his dream. But when she's asking you to come home for a few days because she's alone and you don't, and you say that you don't have a break, you're a dick. That's oh. what I'm saying. And responsible for her death. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Just like Harry is for his parents. Of course, what? Harry's Harry's probably responsible for the death of everyone who dies in the Harry Potter film. That's actually true. There you go. Do you want to have a debate about it? Because I can have a debate about that right now. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think you know enough about the Harry Potter universe. He even admits it. Okay. It is. You can't just go, mm, okay. Sure I can. No, you can't. I'm just not going down an under-hundred road with you. Oh, uh, well, Harry Potter, if you want to have a debate about that, I can have a debate about that. No, I just am astonished that you, you don't feel sorry for Opu. No. I feel sorry for his mother. Wow, I do. I actually she felt she wasn't as clinically depressed in this one as she was in the first one. I felt like she had actually grown and come to terms with some things for herself where she she wasn't as um, uh, incapacitated by her depression. Oh, no, I thought she was maybe more... I actually, I thought it was actually beautiful what Rye did in terms of now she is basically the old woman mm -hmm. that is in somebody else's Very house. much so. Kind of came almost full circle. Very much so. so. I thought it was a brilliant uh, kind of 
arc, I guess you would call it, for mm. her. Mm -hmm. She was annoyed with the person that she was, but now she has become that person. Mm -hmm. And now she's a widow and she doesn't, her kids right. aren't there. And right. She basically became the person that she was so annoyed with. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah, I, I, she was insanely, she did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. I, I, I felt for her mm -hmm. the entire time. I thought she did a really good job. And I thought the dad did a really good job too. And the, in the limited amount of time he, he was there. I did too. Um, and I, that's, as before, Ravi Shankar's music, I thought was just a, a beautiful addition uh, to it. Yeah, I, Rai, he, there's some, there's so many things that he did that um, just groundbreaking. He didn't have, um, I mean, he did. He had influences, I know, cinematically from Italian neorealism. So all, all film directors have things that have informed their decisions and what they do in, in, in their directing. Mm. However, he was a ground, he was a maverick. Yeah. And that he was doing things in directing that had not yet been achieved. And we do now in films, just it's second nature for people to do some things. Uh, and he didn't have the technology to do some things. Like there's some shots that he did where Apu is, Opu is coming back and the shot establishes to the left and it comes across and that would be just a standard either dolly shot mm -hmm. or you've got the steady cams now where you can just wear a steady cam. There were no steady cams back then and if you needed to establish a dolly shot back then, what were you gonna do out on location? Yeah. So that was probably wheeled, you know, they had to build wood on the, whatever they had to do to take the time for those kinds of establishing shots. Um, and the other thing about, aside from being the maverick, his, we mentioned this about the first film, that it felt almost like a documentary. Yeah, same, same thing. Yeah, I, type. No. watching, and I, I, I will always be unashamedly biased toward this by reason of the connection with Bengal and Calcutta. And the Bengaliness of this and the capturing this this um, slice of life out of time, the, I am so eternally grateful for the preservationists mm. who have saved this film Absolutely. because I feel that this film is as important to our understanding of life and history in India and Bengal as architecture that you want to preserve. Because like when he, sh he showed this establishing shot when Opu first makes it to Calcutta and it's on the city street, and I literally like made a noise and reached out toward it of that that's Calcutta like from the 1950s. Mm. He didn't create 1950s Calcutta. That is 1950s Calcutta. Mm. And you you can never replace that. It's completely irreplaceable. And 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 if that's he he also has the capacity, Scorsese said this when he talked about the influence this the, the trilogy had on him. Yeah. Was the fact that he, Rai, and I'm, insp I'm genuinely inspired by the guy. And I can hear him screaming through his medium and his art form of, what's your excuse mm -hmm. to not do what you want to do with your artistry? Because he had every excuse in the world to not get this thing accomplished. Mm -hmm. He could have said, I don't have the money to get it done. I don't have the crew to get it done. I don't have the professional actors to get it done. I'm out on location and I've got weather problems. I've got this. He not only got it done, he got it done with brilliance. So it's like, what's your excuse for not getting your artistry done the way you want to get it done? Yeah. And then what Scorsese said about him, and I find the most extraordinary, is he has the capacity to share with you his focus. I think I articulated it this way to Indrani. I believe Satyajit Rai isn't interested as much in what the audience expects versus what he needs to say. Mm -hmm. And he's able to say, this is what I want to tell you about. This is my, this is me as an Indian. This is me as a Bengali. This is me and my love for Calcutta. This is what I want you to see as the experience of life. And it has all these universal truths in it. And it's the universal truths that connect with us as the audience. Mm -hmm. And then bring us into his world. So we're a fly on the wall and learn things about his culture. Versus a lot of filmmakers will demand that you learn their culture first and then hear, get the messages they're trying to say. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's brilliant. Yeah, and I thought he's what just brilliant. Stacey said, 
when he got an award, he said something about such a Rai. He said that this is a film that was made by Indians for Indians. Correct. Uh, that he shared with us. Exactly, but, uh, but has an accessibility oh, yeah. to any culture because he's dealing with universal truths. Yeah. And that no matter how much time surpasses or where you live or what culture you're from, you can, everybody struggles with you this. You can grieve with people. You yep. can, uh, totally empathize. Uh, yeah, totally empathize with uh, losing a parent, a child, a uh, or... Um, or the choices that you make, for example, yes. The, how many kids... <laughs> realize later in life that they made choices that were selfish mm -hmm. and hurt their family. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I, I should have, I should have been listening and paying attention to what was going on with my parent, but instead I, I made the decision to go do that, mm -hmm. uh, in college and then see the regret. In fact, I saw that in Opu when he was grieving, I saw him grieving, not just the loss of his mom. I saw him grieving the decision he made to not come back. That's why I don't see it as either malicious or hurtful. I see it as tragic, and I feel sorry for Oprah. Well, I know that he feels sorry for that. And yeah. I, like I said, I love that he put that in there. I like it when I have those reactions to characters, because I think that's specifically what they were made for. Yeah. Uh, for me to have that reaction. And yeah. it's up for your interpretation, whether you like it like him, or if you have a, do it like... A, right. Uh, see it like I saw it. Uh, I, I believe he felt sorry, but well, I, I do. still doesn't... Uh, I, I like I said I, I do believe he was sorry, but he still did it, and that's that's the thing. But I, I enjoy that the that he put that in this film. I, yeah. I enjoyed this the, the film and how he how he made that that juxtaposition. Nice, <laughs> well done, Corbin Miles. Did you, I did hear something? Just side note, um, somebody told me that um, Steven Spielberg got his idea for E.T. E.T. from. Some one of Rise films. One of Rise films. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I don't remember which film it is. As you said that too. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny. And it, it, it uh, two other things I want to talk about. One, continuing on with 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 Rye. Um, it's we said this about a, a recent Prabhu thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the tragedy that we haven't been exposed to him until now, uh, I really feel I th I I feel that. Like I learned a lot about theater experientially and, and study, right? But there's something about Rye and his film directing that I feel this way. This is the impact I feel the brilliance of this guy can't be understated. Mm -hmm. I feel like my understanding of cinema has been comparable to the way a child learns a language before they know how to read and write it, mm -hmm. where you can become completely fluent and conversant in it. 100% fluent and conversant and know the ins and outs of the language and master the language when it comes to communication, but you don't know how to read and write it. And I feel like when I watch Rai, I'm learning the alphabet of cinema when I watch him direct, where I myself am already fluent in the language, but his directing is teaching me things about the actual alphabet and the grammatical structure of the way directing is to be done at a level I didn't know could be done. Yeah, it, he's, he's that ingenious to me. And I'm astonished that I haven't well, it's known about him before. People know about him just like they know about Alfred Hitchcock or yeah. uh, other revolutionary directors of the black and white. Maverick era. revolutionaries. Uh, that, that kind of changed the game, basically. Yes. He's in, that, he's in that same category. He is. as In the same way, I just recently watched a, a great Charlie Chaplin film with Indrani, and, and, but even more so, um, I just, these mavericks literally who paved the way and everything that we do now in cinema as just the standard, they did for the first time. Yep. And yes, Ravi Shankar, his score isn't musical, it's emotional. It is, it is as, again, like Satyajit Rai, like um, Karuna Banerjee, saying so much with so little. Mm -hmm. And how oftentimes it's just an essence that he puts you into. It's it's not a musical score. It's an emotional yeah, one. He does. It's just unbelievably good. What do you think is going to happen in the next one? Well, I think we're obviously going to follow Opu into adulthood. To, to, yeah. And, well, I could go right like this one did. I think it went right from where it's left off. I hope so. Uh, essentially, so probably in his college. Yeah, and I don't know if he's going to take it. I don't know if this is the totality of this. I mean, if this is going to make a big jump and cover a huge span, are we going to follow Opu through his entire life? When he gets a family. Right, and what, yeah. What happens and and he that? has kids and he becomes a dad. Or are we just going to follow him into his, from his young adulthood into 
full maturation as a man. Yeah, I, I was wondering why it was called the Apu Trilogy for a while mm -hmm. until the mom died. Because we, you, from the first two, you followed the mom most right. of the time. She right. was the, the lead, but obviously Apu is the last one, so that's obviously why it's called the Apu Trilogy. Right. So I'm wondering if he's like, going to become the mom and uh, if he's going to continue the tragedy and he's going to lose a kid or he's right. going to lose a, a, a wife or something and he's going to have to deal with the what he decided to do then and now how it feels and he's going to empathize with his yeah, parents. You know what I'm things. really interested to see is his choice now as to if he's going to continue down the road he was on or is there something familial that's going to hit him with the loss of his mom that's going to draw him back toward village life and being a priest. Mm. I think there's a choice between him going back to village life and being a priest, or if he's going to continue on this journey and live in the metro metropolitan and pursue higher education. Yeah. And again, I think we're we're going to see the continued metaphor of the train. Yeah. Throughout. Yeah. Uh, which is which is really <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really enjoy that. So uh, you'll see that in just a couple seconds. I think it's like happening in three, two, one. Oh, good shirt change. Right? And furniture change. Right? Like <laughs> chairs and... It's the magic of movie. I think the background mm -hmm. changed too. I don't know how. This it's has all been amazing. the same day. I think you've trimmed your beard. Probably. Wow. It's it, it's all movie magic. But yes, we are our, uh, we finally watched the third one. Which uh, means it, it we did. have now officially seen the entire Opu trilogy and we've watched it. It did wasn't very long for you. It's not like Sacred Games. Right. <laughs> no, you got to see it in one fell swoop. <laughs> Which is why we did it the way we did. But yes, this one is the third one. It's called... Um, uh, that's not the actual... No, oh, it's right here. Cool. Yeah. A poor Sansar? Yes, but and for the Bengalis, it's a poor Shanchar. A poor Shanchar. Okay. Yeah, in, in Bengali. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's uh, still directed by Sacha Desai and yep. still Ravi Shankar. Yeah. Which is amazing that um, the I, I I didn't know that Ravi Shankar was going to do all of them. I I didn't either, and was hoping he was after the I'm, first one. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. he did. Um, but yes, this and one we have much to say. But we have much to say. Much to say as yeah. we do. This, yeah. This review is probably an hour long, honestly. It's gotta be. Um, but that's one starring. Uh, say these names for me, please. Yes, Sumitra Chatterjee, mm -hmm. who do you know um, right here off the, at the get-go? You know who that is, aside from being It's Opu? That's the guy from the short film. Yes, well done. I sent you that. Yeah, well, no, not, <laughs> not recently. Yeah, I sent you that information. Not recently. Yeah. No, I, all I remembered was the Saif Ali Khan's mom thing. Yeah, I told you it was it was the guy oh. from the short film and then Saif I must have received film. it after, I must have received that from you after... Anyway, um, <laughs> but yes, and then yes. it's also starring, and it's also starring uh, Sharmila Tagore, uh, who is Saif Ali Khan's mother. Yes, uh, and I want to talk about her first. She was fantastic, and she honestly had a very small role, mm -hmm. uh, and I was kind of sad when when what happened oh, happened. Man, of course, um, but it was she did so so well i mean this is the first thing outside of a song that yeah. we've seen her in the, the women she, in all three films yeah it, <laughs> she has such a screen presence about her uh and, and yeah i'm sure you guys know this about her career but uh, it's the first time we're seeing her mm -hmm. and i thought for being almost silent most of the time she made quite an impact yes she did uh and you you related to her and you you, you felt for her in mm -hmm. her relationship and what she was having it was a full-on weird scenario that I don't understand at all about, <laughs> hey, come to this wedding. Hey, now do you want to be the groom? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I understand it's probably cultural. Yeah, I, it I, is cultural. I just don't understand it that. It is cultural. And <laughs> the fact that there's an auspicious hour that yeah. it needs to be done, that is definitively yeah. I, I was cultural. Like, I was like, I'm just struggling this would be culture. I still think it's weird. But okay, right. Um, but it, it was it was a very really, I thought it was well done how how he handled that situation mm -hmm. and how uh, how she did as well that whole scene where he's talking to her and what she said about it and she was just staring off and mm -hmm. beautiful direction obviously by such a guy in mm -hmm. in that scene. Uh, I, so I that's my one. A lot to say. This might actually be my favorite of the three. Hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, and it's interesting. I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. I feel like they've done this as they've yeah. gone. Yeah. And they really are. It's like Gangs of Wasper. Gangs of Wasper is one film. It's mm -hmm. a five-hour-long film. Yeah. And this is this is this is a film in three parts. You just need to watch all three of them, and it, it is a singular yeah. piece of work. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I thought he did really well. Uh, one of the reasons it might be my favorite is because. I enjoy acting, and once you get adult actors, mm. they know what to do, mm -hmm. usually. Uh, and as opposed to, you can't really blame kids, even though the kids in this were fantastic. Yeah, all of the kids were really, I'm not really saying, like, some, like, some of the best, most natural acting I've seen in cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, which Agreed. is an, uh, a, a test to what Satya Rai can do. Agreed. Um, but the, the fact that you, they brought a bunch of depth to these characters now uh, that I, I really, really enjoyed. I thought he did a phenomenal job. I agree. Uh, and he being Sumitra Chatterjee. Sumitra Chatterjee, sorry. In, in showing Apu's struggles and his, his growth and his, um, what, basically what he was going through. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's, he's going through a lot. He's, yep. he's a cursed child, man, let me tell you. I'm very interested after I saw this, especially in light of how you felt about Opu from the first, mm -hmm. the second film. So now that you've seen this, what what were your feelings about him in the third oh, film? I think he's a dick. All the way to the end. Here's the thing, Rick. No, I, no, 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 no. I, I expect this. I expect I, I, this. I appreciated. Uh, I, I enjoyed him, and I loved the performance. Yeah. It, it's nothing about the film that I didn't like. This is just he's a hundred percent a dick, and <laughs> and he's selfish. I'm just, if you leave your child for five years, you're an asshole. I'm, there's, there's no reason for you to leave your child for five years. Can you name a reason to leave your child for five years? Yes, I what? actually can. What? Uh, there's, well, what he specifically is going through. No, there's been people that whose wife, I just had a kid. If my wife died in labor, I wouldn't abandon my son because he died, because well, she died because and, of him. And part of the reason you wouldn't do that is because... Uh, I'm not an asshole. Yeah. No. No, part of the reason you wouldn't do that is because you haven't had a long history of uh, I, I of understand, tragedies. I understand what you're saying, and I know why he did it. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's okay. No, and it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> Which mean makes it's him okay. an asshole. Well, no, I don't see. That's I don't go that far. I agree. Anyway. It's not okay, and it's not the preferred thing that he should have done. He should have, you know, in a perfect world, that is what he does. However, he's a grown adult man who has been shaped by doesn't mean profound it. suffering and tragedy. And that's no excuse for leaving your child. It when nope. you <laughs> I don't I, I there's no might, scenario where I will agree with you well, abandoning your child is a good thing you, to you, do. You you might in 20 years. Nope. Uh, yeah, nope. you might. Because there are aspects and it's what makes his uh, it's what makes the finale for me so powerful uh, is because of what he is having to deal with and why he abandons his son. Um, it's the same reason that people, for example, uh, just, just this is one example where there will be dads who never said I love you to their sons and when they're on their deathbed finally say it once. Was it wrong for them to have not said I love you for the whole entirety of the child's life? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but are there reasons as to why they do that? Yeah, there's, it doesn't, there's a difference between excusing something and explaining it. And things can be wrong, yet simultaneously be understandable in terms of what the person's having to deal with. And it doesn't excuse the behavior, but it does give you a level of empathy. And at the end, for me, the power of seeing what happens with Opu. Uh, I mean, at the end, I was, I was literally saying it at the screen over and over, come on, come on Opu, do it. You can do it. Don't give in to your fear. Don't give in to the way tragedy has shaped you. Uh, and and I, I get it's tragic and it sucks. And I get there are some things that people go through that are so painful and so tragic that they literally don't know how they can function or exist or do something and they're the only thing they know how to do to cope without losing their minds or jumping off a cliff is to run away from it mm -hmm. um i i 
Like I said, I know why he did what he did, <laughs> but that doesn't, I, I will never excuse somebody leaving their child. And I also saying this, I love the hit, this whole part of it. <laughs> I love the part of the film where he left his children because it brought out that in me of, yep, yeah, you're an asshole, sorry. Uh, I don't, I, and I know why he was doing it. He, he doesn't want to lose anybody else. If he, if he attaches this child, yeah, is he I also mean, going to lose this child? That's a myriad and, of and reasons for him, and that is a huge one. Yeah. I, I, I understand why he did it. I get it. Still wrong, He's still an asshole, and selfish. But I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to explain here. Uh, there's nothing like out, uh, like I'm not like holding it out on this film because I hated the character. Yeah, no, just I like I love Harry Potter. I hate that son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> like he, he's a prick. But anyways. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to explain, but I, 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 I thoroughly enjoyed, um, did, Sacha did Rye wrote it, right? No, well, he wrote the script. It's taken from a, a book. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah, so he took the, it adapt, he adapted it, and I, yeah. I don't know the I original it, material, but I think it's a brilliant script. I thought it was a, a really well done script mm -hmm. in terms of how many, how much stuff you go through, and there's a really short amount of time. For being such an old film, I'm surprised at how short each of these films are. Yeah, I mean, maybe I it was supposed to be one full film and he cut it up, I don't know. But, like... You, it's what hour forty five, hour fifty. This one maybe, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Under two, under two. It, it seemed really short, and mm -hmm. and everything went by really, really fast. It almost caught me by surprise um, that she died when she did. Oh. Uh, yeah. I was like totally oh. shocked. I I kind of expected. I was like, a poo's life is just sad, mm -hmm. and. <laughs> Uh, I'm assuming this is just going to be another sad story right. on top of his already sad life. Uh, and so I, I expected somebody to die. I was just kind of hoping it wasn't her or right then because I was like, oh, we're just getting into it. We got two films with the mom who I really, really enjoyed. Right. And then you just kind of almost got half of a film with this one. Uh, but. <laughs> and I thought it was a really well done uh, point for both Rai mm -hmm. and uh, for Opu. The capturing of the moment when he finds out she's dead yeah. and how that is the proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back for him mm -hmm. it's i i can't i can't that's the last that's the last loss Lay of someone i love yeah mm -hmm. that's the last loss of someone i love so much so that there were so many points in this that got me so emotional mm -hmm. uh because i can relate to them personally the the moment where he's sitting there watching the sunset and he has his book and he just does this and gives it away and the the don't the, don't let her be, the, <laughs> that's what i said when, I, when, it, when it happened you on did the screen not. i did you can ask my wife i said don't let her <laughs> That's where your mind was at that moment? Yeah, that's oh, exactly wow. where it was. I enjoyed that symbolic moment oh. too, though. But my mind's different. Go. <laughs> I, I, uh, I knew he was... What he was doing was... Uh, it wasn't just he was saying, God, I give my life to you and I'm giving it up. Mm -hmm. it, was him, uh, it was him saying, this is the only thing I have left that I love. And I can't bear the thought of it being taken from me or not coming to fruition the way I dreamed it would come to fruition. So yeah. you know what? I am done. Mm -hmm. But he's not because he's still alive, first of all. He doesn't kill himself. I thought he was going to kill himself. I did too. Yeah. I, when he was standing at the train. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, thought he was going to pull I thought that's how he was going to kill I thought that's how the film was going to end. Me too. No way. Me too. <laughs> I got excited. I know. He was going to be like, yeah, do it, bro, do it. Show the blood. Yeah. <laughs> but he, 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 he lives yeah. and continues to send money to his son, which is obviously at face value, that's such a shallow, empty thing to do. But the reality of it is, is that is the one last little thread ember of hope that's still left inside of him mm -hmm. that keeps him alive. Yeah. And I, I just thought it was, and, and the symbolism at the end of the fact that he, when he showed up, and I thought that little boy did a beautiful job. A yeah. really beautiful job. They did a, a really good job of casting almost everybody because that yeah. little kid looked like him when he was a little kid. It my, all the Apus looked very, very they similar. Did. Like they would actually grow up to be this man. And I, I love when good. we first see him. He's out playing and it's like I saw him and I thought, just like your dad. Mm -hmm. 
you're out playing, shooting arrows, and out in the wilderness, and yeah. he does what every little kid would do, even when their dad isn't around. When someone says, you can't do that, and he says, well, yeah, well, my dad's going to come beat you up, mm -hmm. even though he's never seen his dad. But then when his dad does show up, he responds the way a little kid probably would, mm -hmm. who hasn't known his dad. Um, and I felt... It, some moments just flat out killed me. I already know. If you're wondering, no, I don't even need to ask him. I know he didn't cry. No, right. that was never close. The, the, <laughs> the, we haven't even we haven't even brought that up in a while about make Corbin cry. It's not. It's never gonna happen. Yeah, I was a snot running out the nose. Oh really? Oh, I was a mess. Yeah. And when it was over, I was still crying, talking yeah. to Indrani about it. Yeah, I was a mess. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I didn't cry. Especially in light of. The fact that he showed up, I was so happy. And I'm just saying, please, Opu, please don't give in to your fear. Don't give in to your pain. Don't give in to pessimism. Let the love you have for this boy keep you going. Don't be afraid to look at his face because it's going to remind you of her. Don't stop dreaming. That's the hardest thing. And it's one of the beautiful things about this among many in the message mm -hmm. is um, what do you do when your dream has died? Mm -hmm you dream another dream. And that is so freaking hard when you've had a dream die. A dream is a dream the heart makes. Oh, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> so for him to have seen the most important things in his life die over and over and over again, and then himself sacrifice what he wants to be as a writer. Yeah. There he is looking at the thing that was scaring him the most of, can I love again? Uh, can I dream again? Should I open my heart up to this? But inside of him, he's like, "How?" that's that little thread pulling him. When I saw that he bought him, of all things, a train. Mm -hmm. And you know, the whole train throughout the, the entire The whole thing, train so. thing. And the, 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 the ending of the film, the dialogue between him and his son, the way it was written and the way it was directed was so powerful. Mm -hmm. Uh where he said, Ugh, here we go. When he's asking him, are you really my dad? And then he says, I want to be your friend. And um, that moment when he was walking away and his son first appears behind him and he turns and everything inside of him is saying, please unite you guys. Please let this happen. Don't give up Opu. Because how many times have we watched Opu walk away from something he shouldn't have walked away from? Mm -hmm. And there he is looking at his kid and... Uh, it, it ending with them not walking alongside a train track, which represented throughout this advancement of the future, the unstoppability of time, the, the rigidness of things that you can't change and you can't, that, has, that has no life in it. At the end, they're not walking alongside a train track. They're walking alongside a river with this boat that's going in the same direction they are with his son on his shoulders, which mm -hmm. uh, that's one of my happiest memories from childhood is walking in Disneyland on my dad's shoulders yeah. so it i was yeah and there was destroyed there were the certain end. shots in this too like when whenever it was the river there was some beautiful shots of the river in this one yeah that were just and in black and white just so pretty <sighs> which is incredible well, uh word to the folks out there because there was this big thing for years to colorize black and white films no no I, anyone tries to colorize this thing, I'm going to go burn down their building. <laughs> Don't touch this film. Yeah. <laughs> Colorizing film's weird. Oh, man. Uh, my wife won't watch the uh, In Color, Wonderful Life. No, no, no. I don't watch anything that's been colorized. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to see it. Um, but yeah, and also the I thought the score in this with yeah, Ravi Shankar, as, as Shankar. always, is really, really good. But yeah. I think this one was even. It it had a lot more score. I felt like. There you go. That? It was perfectly, I, the first thing that came into my mind when I was watching it was, here we go. We've entered the world of Apu as an adult, which compared to a child's world is so much more complex. Mm -hmm. And what has Ravi Shankar done? He's given us the most complex musical scoring mm -hmm. for the thing. Still keeping, amazingly, what we talked about in the other two. Still giving you a sense of emotion rather than, you know, like at the end, you don't want, in a moment like that, as a director, you don't want people thinking about your score. You want the score to be enhancing the emotion. I, I wasn't thinking about the score. Yeah. And that's, it's just it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it was, beautiful it was score. brilliant. If there was one gripe I had, and it was just a uh, personal preference, and it was the very end part, even though I enjoyed it as a cinematic thing, a kid 
going to a guy he hasn't known and so he's just calling him his father at five years old. I don't know if a kid would just be that willing. Mm. Kids are pretty stubborn and they he knows his grandpa and he True. knows he loves his grandpa. True. That's his only figure that he's done. This random person that's saying his father, kids wouldn't normally go. I under, like I said, I understand why he did it. It's much uh, more cinematic that way. It is. It's much, much, a sure. much better story. So how, how long do you think, how, do you, how long do you think Opu was there before he left? Where? Uh, there with his kid because he arrives oh. and he's there for a, an amount of time before he leaves. I thought it was just like a couple of days. Well, I did too. I didn't think it was a matter of hours. I did think it was it was several days. Yeah, I thought it was a few and days. And the reason, well, there's two reasons. I three reasons probably. I like the ending. Yeah. One is because I'm a hopeless romantic who wants a happy ending. No, I enjoyed. Like I, said, <laughs> I enjoyed the I enjoyed the ending. But I, I don't know if I would have believed that. Yeah, I yeah. believe it in light of the fact that uh, the fact that it's been several days. Mm. The fact that there have been slow attempts by him to reach out. And most importantly, because when we first are introduced to this little guy, it's what he's wanting the most. Mm -hmm. So be, I think he's, uh, he's really not sure. And it's what draws him to come out at the end is when his dad goes to leave, which again, for me, unless uh, he doesn't take the kid with him and he's like, he says, he just wants to be his friend for now. And they just, yeah, I don't know. Maybe? I don't know. My, my, then that guy can believe, but my, my, my personal experience, the subjectivity of my personal experience and having been an only child whose parents divorced at seven and when I was 12 yeah. wanting to go live with my dad, yeah. um, I can resonate with the prospect of a kid in that position who's been waiting so long to be with their dad and yeah. looking and seeing him and saying, are you really my dad? It's finally, here, here's the hero I've been you, waiting you for. You did know your dad the entire time. True, true. He, he, this is the first time he's seen his father. True. <laughs> and so that, that's the only thing. And it's not a big thing. Like I said, I still enjoyed the ending a lot. I just don't know if I fully believe it, but I understand I why he did it. Yeah, I did. And I, I enjoyed it. it. But, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the only gripe. Outside of that, it's a fantastic, fantastic series. It yeah. is. It is. It lived up to the expectations. Yeah. And for, it maybe even exceeded it a little bit. It did for me. I told that to Indrani when I was talking about it was the... the we had really high expectations for this coming in because mm -hmm. so many people had said you're... You don't know what you're missing. This is one of the greatest directors in cinematic history. So that's a that's a tall that is, measure to get up to. And absolutely. it completely went beyond anything I was expecting. Uh, it, it is this film for many reasons. Can we just talk about something right now? No. There's a moment I, I was flabbergasted. Mm. They're in the movie theater. And how great was that to see that oh, old yeah. film? That was cool. So they're in the movie theater and Rai has a close-up shot on the movie screen. This gets me emotional thinking about it too because this may have been, this may have been the first time this was done. Mm -hmm. uh, but that he did this at that time. It's on the movie screen, it blurs, and he pulls back and we're now looking out the window of their carriage with no cutaway. Obviously there was a cutaway, mm -hmm. but he had to have pre-visualized that shot before mm -hmm. and not only pre-visualized that idea then had to articulate to his people that were working with him what he wanted to do and then when he edited it all he had was a razor blade and 35 millimeter and had to do something that the finished product is pretty freaking seamless mm -hmm. I, I i just was jaw dropped astonished at for, that shot for what 1959 for this one yeah and then 1955 Nine, the first one. A first time director, granted it's his third film, but this is one film. First time director mm -hmm. doing something in, in, in Bengal that he has very little money to do and is just, a, the man is a maverick. Yeah. Uh, that that we, we, there are things that are done now in cinema, uh, obviously, because Scorsese has mentioned him, Quentin Tarantino has talked about him. Yeah. So he's just, an, he is everything everybody has said he is. Yeah. And uh, obviously, we loved it. So please let us know what of his we should be watching. I don't know if you know of any. There's a uh, lot. I know, but well, what it, should I, be the next. I do I know. Is. I do know this because obviously I was talking to Andrani about it. Was that he? He. Um, this was the the work that had the most international notoriety for him, mm -hmm. because what he did with the majority of his career was is known throughout uh, Bengali cinema that he's done 
dozens and dozens of film. Mm -hmm. But uh, of the dozens of film that he's done, the diehards who followed him would pay attention to it, but it didn't have the kind of international re renown that the Obu trilogy had. Gotcha. And so there's not only a ton of film, but there's an entire uh, film institute of his okay. in yeah. Calcutta. Well, let us know what we should watch of his next or uh, what other Bengali film as well. And uh, I want to watch the work of uh, Mr. Chatterjee uh, that we got to be exposed to. A boat, older boat? Yes, yeah. because we didn't even realize who we were seeing. Oh, yeah, he looks much different. In that short film. Yeah, he looks and much different now. <laughs> come on now. Yeah. Uh, Sharmila Tagore? Yeah, I'd like to see more of her. Oh, she, has, she, was, she has an innocence of uh, Sri Devi or Madhuri Dixit. Uh, uh, and type a, feel to it. A beauty. Mm -hmm. There were moments she was on screen, and I was actually, I had Indrani watching it with me through the phone mm -hmm. as well, and both of us at the same time, there were some shots that he got of just her face, and we both at the same time went, ah. Oh, yeah, she's beautiful. Look at that face. Mm -hmm. And then there was a point she took her hair down and turned, and I was like, oh, look at that hair. Mm -hmm. Just, an, uh, could you imagine this film on a freaking screen. That is what I would like to see happen. I would love to see somebody somewhere put this up on an actual movie screen and get the chance to see it the way it was supposed to be Might seen. Maybe too in Calcutta. Or Maybe at his film institute? Maybe. That'd be freaking awesome. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, let us know what other films of his we should watch next down below. And thank you for the recommendation. And thanks for staying with us for the three films that we finally got to see. All you Bengali stupid babies, you thought we'd never get to it. And it only took an hour. Yep. <laughs>